Good morning, everyone. I wanted to make a video for Hungry Scholar. Uh, thank you, everyone who signed up recently and um, <clears throat> joined my project. My project right now is finishing my education. I'm actually finishing two master's degrees. I really have to buckle down these next two months and get a lot of writing accomplished. A lot of research still to be accomplished, but the research part is pretty much complete if that is ever over for me. I love to do research. I'm always researching. The other people are always researching and I want to find out what they're learning. So it never really ends for me. If you wonder where I am, what I'm doing, I'm probably buried in a computer or, you know, I actually realize as a student you need time to think so there are times when I kind of veg out and I might even be listening to political stuff and playing a game on my phone but I am allowing the back recesses of my brain to process my research and to uh, formulate my theories and formulate the literature into um, an organized fashion, an organized argument, basically. You know, what is it saying? What, what is it? What is all the literature when I pull it together? What is it saying? Um, it's just really fun for me, actually, because I've always had so many trains of thoughts in my mind my whole life, and uh, I finally have ways to organize it and make and and it's useful knowledge you know i'm getting very very useful knowledge and organizing it and as a global thinker i'm able to pull together two degrees my political science degree and my international education degree and really think about things and how they work and and i don't know if you can say this about everything but clearly education is tied to government and politics often run government sadly uh when i say politics i mean the act of uh, politicians continuing to stay elected and remain elected and do their politicking things because um uh that's what they have to spend a lot of their time doing and education has been set up in America and <clears throat> excuse me in other western countries and many most countries around the world governments are in charge of the public education and you know while it's a wonderful thing to have uh, education for all and to really reach for that um it's uh in times of crisis, governments have to make decisions where their resources go. And we're in a lot of crisis pretty much all over the world. We've been in global economic crisis for several decades. We're uh, in political crisis, wars. Uh, now we're in a huge, huge refugee crisis. And um, uh, really the approach by international organizations like the UN and all their sub organizations and they treated themselves like uh, you know they would they would help establish peace and in times of crisis they would go in and help solve things along with the help of other actors you know uh, the government other governments that send aid uh, you know that sort of thing and there's so much crisis going on that nobody there isn't enough aid there isn't enough to do anything so it's causing uh organizations to reestablish their goals and where they put resources so education is really falling out understandably right and what kids can really focus or think, although many of them do. I mean, they really want to go back to school and just have like a normal life. For a kid, going back to school is like normal life, right? You went to school and now. But that that time may be past. There's, there's several million children out of school in the Middle East. 
Um, it's a lot of kids and youth that are out of school. A lot of university students lost their education. A lot of high school students pretty much are learning nothing except maybe a language if they've managed to get connected with an organization. But we got a lot of kids in tent cities. Um, you know, I've researched all the countries pretty much, not Egypt as well, but Turkey, uh, Israel. Israel is getting a lot of refugees now. The Russian safe corridor um, that they built, the humanitarian corridor, leads right to the border of Israel, apparently. Um, so, and meanwhile, Turkey has, oh, excuse me for rocking the camera. I'm getting nervous going off in my war thoughts, but, um, this all affects refugee education in Turkey, which used to take a very standoffish position, is now infiltrating Syria and, and um, they want to, uh, apparently rebuild the Ottoman Empire. So things have been a little crazy over there for a while. And battle lines are being drawn. And I have to even re-evaluate Lebanon because Hamas is very active in there. Um, Israel is staying very prepared at the border and they will fire on uh, Hamas. And the bottom line is Lebanon has allowed so many Syrians in. I mean, God bless their generous heart, but at the same time, they bring in a lot of security issues as well, and that can't be ignored. It was very safe a year ago, and for all I know, it's safe today. Um, the university in Beirut, the American university, apparently barred an Iranian um, professor from speaking at a debate, and they're making, of course, the free speech argument, but I, my response is that Lebanon has now become a battlefield and that's even going to happen at the university level. When it comes to free speech, Iran, unfortunately, does not support free speech and it is the position of the Trump administration, I am certain, to support the people. And we had opportunities to do that in the past and people have different positions on this that you know the, the establishment of an Iranian democracy was a beautiful thing but it's really become clear now that it's um the battle lines are between the United States and Saudi Arabia and Israel and Jordan is at peace Egypt is at peace. Um, Lebanon is getting torn, as I said, because of Hamas and all the Syrians that have flown in there, and Iran is backing them. And then um, the Saudi prince hasn't managed to get a hold of the the um, Iranian-backed Houthis in, in um, Yemen, so they're still fighting going on there, even though that, that like land is like marginalized. It's off to the sea. It's like on the coastline. Um, so it's not like as huge as a threat, but then you have all the North African countries that are pretty insane. I don't, don't even pay attention to those a lot. Um, but so as far as education is concerned, it's still a crisis. It's more of a crisis than ever. What are we going to do with these kids? I mean, we have to feed them and that's, what organizations end up doing. Um, so, unfortunately, the YMCA, at one point, I discovered, I'm very connected with the YMCA. I love the YMCA, okay? The YMCA, here, I, we can talk about happy things. The YMCA is the Young Men's Christian Association, and they also have the YWCA, but it's not that much. Um, and it's a very old organization, over a hundred years old, and it um, does operate in the Middle East. There is a YMCA now in Beirut, in Lebanon. Apparently there's one in Greece. The one in Greece seems to act, at least it did, much more like a recreation center. Excuse me if I got loud, I feel like I was just shouting there. Um, <laughs> I get excited. Um, so in Lebanon, um, 
they have one but now all the inter it's all the international ymca is really just forgive me it's a an arm of the global elitists that we're trying to escape from uh it's highly connected to the vatican uh to the un um these organizations are so questionable now all these large organizations uh, global organizations with vast resources. Um, we can't trust them. So it makes my must message even stronger. Although, you know, I'm just a little tiny warrior down here waving my little toothpick spear. <laughs> I'm going to kill you, you education giant. I'm going to kill you. No, but uh, as an American, I'm very fortunate to have some power, and I do have some a God who has all the power in the world, and uh, I don't get into religious debates here. I like to take the Abrahamic approach, where uh, we share the same father, Abraham, and from there, our religions diverge, and we have different understandings of the Messiah, of the prophets, and uh perhaps the end times and the way to salvation. Uh, but we also have very strong foundational principles that we share. And um, they go against what the pagans are doing. Although I have to add that the Islamists are a group of their own. And how those two evil tools connect in the scope of everything is... Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm just down here with my little toothpick sword. So um, homeschooling really is the phenomenal solution. Praise God. He already laid the groundwork in the United States. Israel apparently.